Hospitalization Rate Post-Attempt at Diabetes Control Tutorial 15 An In-Class Challenge Problem For those who want a deeper insight in cohorts, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare by Iran Bellin, available on Amazon in either paperback or Kindle. In this challenge, we're going to ask you to take a look at hospitalization rates after patients were in treatment for a period of time. Let's look at the temporal map. In clinical looking glass, whenever you think about a problem, you have to sketch out the temporal map. We're going to start out with a group of diabetics. In this case, it's going to be those diabetics we found before that actually had an A1C greater than or equal to 9.5. They were followed for a period of 180 days in what was called the blackout period, that is, we didn't look for any outcome, and then from day 180 to day 365, we looked for evidence of either good control, a hemoglobin A1c less than or equal to 7, or bad control, a hemoglobin A1c greater than or equal to 9. This was the outcome, less than or equal to 7, greater than or equal to 9. Once that cohort was established, that is, those people were then established as either getting good or bad control, we then took those two cohorts and want to see whether they develop a hospitalization. We want to know whether those two cohorts go on to be hospitalized. So let's see how we would do this in Study Designer. The first step is to get the cohorts that were in good control. Those were the diabetics that we call the good diabetics. And then the people in bad control, those were the diabetics we called the bad diabetics. Let's add another study, as we did before. We're going to write diabetic, diabetics with post control hospitalization. First step is to pull those cohorts from before. We have the good diabetics, that's going to be the baseline group. We're going to add another group. That group is going to be the bad diabetics. We have to name the group. This is good control, and this name is bad control. with the baseline being on the good control. The method, we add a method. Method type is going to be a time to outcome. Time to outcome, admit. We're going to follow people for 365 days. Outcome is admission. We're going to get an outcome at 30, 60, 90, 180, 365 days. I'm going to rename it as Hospital Admits. And we're going to run it. The original cohorts were built of two condition lines. The first line said diabetes hemoglobin A1c, the hemoglobin A1c greater than 9.5. And the second line had a repeat hemoglobin A1c with some value. The index event line pointed to the second line. That is, the index event line pointed to the repeat study. And therefore, the time to outcome is measuring the time from the repeat blood test until the hospitalization. So we're really looking at what has happened after good or bad control was accomplished. It's absolutely critical that the index date be chosen so that it is starting the analysis at the right point. You have your gender, you have your age breakdown, target event. We see the good controls in black. The orange is the bad control, and the bad control is above the good control. On the x-axis are the number of days that have elapsed from time zero for each subject. 
we know 0 to 365 days. On the y-axis is a cumulative percent who have been discharged by that day. So we say by 50 days we're at about 5%. At 365 days on the orange group, we're at about 23%. The orange group is climbing into the hospital faster than the black group, and it's statistically significant. So we know that those in bad control are coming into the hospital faster than those in good control. And here's the table underneath it. At 365 days, 15.3% of the good control people have been admitted at least once. In the bad control people, 23% have been admitted at least once. If we look at the 95% confidence interval, the upper limit of the good control is 18.9%. The lower limit of the bad control is 20.4%. These two intervals do not overlap, once again affirming the fact that there is a statistically significant difference in the hospitalization rate between the bad control and the good control group. Now this is looking at only the first hospitalization. Suppose we look at all events. This is important. In the simple method, all events tab is very useful. It counts all the events, the first, the second, the third event, and it also calculates the person days of follow-up. In this case, this cohort of good control people had 135,103 days of follow-up. The 124 divided by 135,103 gives you the incident density multiplied by 365 days gives you the average number of admissions you would expect annually from this person, 0.3. The bad control group had a total of first, second, third, fourth, etc. admissions of 456 with 366,666 person days of risk and an incident density per year, 0.45. The relative risk takes this number divides it by this number, giving 1.355. You're 1.355 times more likely to be admitted to the hospital if you're in bad control than good control, with a confidence interval that goes from 1.11 to 1.6. It excludes one and is statistically significant at the 95% confidence level. The risk difference goes from 0.047 to 0.191. It excludes zero, and so this too is statistically significant. If you want, you can generate a patient list, as we did before, and take a look and see who needs to be seen and follow up. We're going to save the study. See it appear here. In the management pane. We're going to close the study after saving it. This is different from Event Canvas. In Event Canvas you don't save, you just exit, but in Study Designer you do have to save. And now you can use a PDF to create a report to share with your colleagues. Fully self-documented and completely anonymized. So from this study, we believe that getting people under good control reduces hospital admissions.